Right. Let's do the class. Namaste everyone. Um, welcome to Hindi University. Really excited to have all of you this Sunday. Uh, as you know, my name is Ashutosh and we meet um, every Sunday 8 a.m. U.S. Pacific time, which is time on the west coast of the U.S. to learn about the Hindi language. Um, for those of you who are completely new to Hindi University, you can learn more about us by going to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Hindi University. And for those of you who are interested in joining the live sessions we have every Sunday, you can get all the details on our page, which is tiny.cc slash Hindi University, one word, okay? Um, here you can get all the details about the, 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 the way how you can join the Sunday class, also the practice session that we have throughout the week. Uh, you can get the details about those as well, as well as the books that we've been following uh, for all levels. And if you miss any of the previous sessions also, you can get the details of the, the previous lessons. Um, and most importantly, as the community is, you know, uh, engaging more and more and growing more and more, uh, we have developed many, many tools such as like Discord and WhatsApp. Um, so you can get all, all those details about how to join the Discord and engage with the, with the community. Um, uh, with that being said, as you know, we've been following two parallel tracks of this year, uh, the beginner track, you know, and then similarly the intermediate plus. And for the beginner track, we're covering two books. First one is the Elementary Hindi by Professor Richard Delisi. He's a professor at the Harvard University. And similarly, uh, Pingu Learns Hindi is what we are covering for the beginner track. And for intermediate plus, it's a it's a blended curriculum, which includes um, multiple books as well as my own uh, material, uh, material from like you know Kavita Kumar. Um, similarly. Uh, Professor Usha Jain and then you know wrote Professor Ru Personnel. So it's a combination of multiple things. In the intermediate plus we are also focusing on the reading part. So you know folks who are comfortable or have some good knowledge of Devanagari script, they can read a paragraph and they can try to uh, comprehend it. Okay, I'll try to include the pronunciation section also within that. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. As always, the uh, discussion and participation is always encouraged. So if you have any questions, definitely ask throughout the class, whenever possible, definitely write on chat about your responses to the questions that are being asked. That way I'll know, um, I'll get immediate feedback about whether I'm going too fast, too slow, or I need to do some more uh, uh, different examples. Okay. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, today we'll be starting a new chapter, uh, which is chapter number nine from elementary Hindi book, which is, as I said, a book from Professor Richard Delacy. Um, in this book, uh, or in this chapter, by the end of this chapter, you will get a pretty good refresher. Uh, we'll start for the beginner level, but then we'll make the, we'll increase the complexity. And um, most of you probably already familiar with it. It's a post position in Hindi called Ko, which often, you know, it confuses a lot of people, right? So my goal is by the end of this class, folks who already know it, they'll have a little bit more appreciation about this post position co, how to use it, when to use it, uh, and will not be able to finish everything, but at least I'll try my best to kind of, you know, give you a, uh, and folks who are completely new, uh, you will have a little bit better handle on, okay, what is it? Okay. Um, so before I go into the, the post position directly, you know, I want to give a small refresher on uh, the the language structure, right? So as you probably know, Hindi is an SOV language. So you have a subject followed by object followed by verb. Okay, this is the typical language structure. Within that also, there is a need to understand how do you further deconstruct the object. There are two types of objects you can think of, a direct object as well as indirect object. Okay, typically in English, if you were to write a sentence, you will say, um, John, let's say, gave an apple, right? Uh, that's a simple language structure. Okay, John gave an apple. In English, you can see that you have a subject, which is John, S. You have a verb, which is 
give or give and then apple svo no issue so far okay but how do you know how do you like let's say if if you know when the sentence is written in a new language that is being written which you have no knowledge about how do you really find out what is a direct object and what is an indirect object in your own language it may be simpler because you know it may be simpler because you know you, you know about it you worked on it right you can uh, we can feel it right but for a new language it can be very very tricky okay so how do we find out that okay so i'll i'll continue with the same example that we have so in order for you to have the direct object the first question that you need to know is is there an action word is there an action word in the in the sentence if there is no action word there is no direct object imagine if the sentence above was just simply john apple there is no way for you to know like you cannot really make sense of the sentence right so you cannot tell whether there is a direct object or not if there is no action verb so this action verb is giving you the indication right similarly if it was simply john gives and nothing after that john gives you don't know john gives what okay john gives what you don't know that similarly you don't know um, who who does he give to you don't know those two things so in a sentence if you can answer what and who okay that's basically your clue that there is a direct object or not if you can tell john gives apple or strawberry it answers you what okay that's your clue that there is a direct object in the sentence okay i'll come to how this applies to go in hindi but i hope you understand that right so that's your direct object okay um so far you only spoken about a direct object let's let me ask a question again and right now i'll stick with english and then i'll jump to hindi let's say now if your um sentence is sara threw the ball okay sara threw the ball what do you think it's a direct object in this sentence you can write it in a in a chat either the facebook chat or the zoom chat and i want to hear all from all of you what is a direct object and what why okay keep it coming and then i'll increase the uh, what is the direct object in the sentence okay why right. okay so pretty much unanimously everyone is saying the ball is the direct object akhil ji why is the ball direct object uh because it answers the question what did sara throw okay it answers the questions what so it is the recipient of the action right recipient of the verb correct so that's why it is a direct object okay answer uh, awesome okay now let me add the complexity to the sentence so so far we know subject you know verb and you have a direct object that is answering the what or the who question okay um so you know that now let's say the sentence would written as sara threw the ball to su imagine the scenario you have a sara here you have a ball and you have a su there okay what is su su receiving let me ask you only akhil ji what is su receiving in this case um su is receiving the ball but su is not receiving the verb directly su is 
receiving the ball. So she is receiving the the ball, the, the direct object. She's not very. receiving. So she is receiving the direct object. Okay, and thus who becomes an oh indirect object. Very good. So she becomes an she becomes an indirect object. Right, right. So it becomes an indirect object. Hopefully, it's clear to everyone. Any questions so far? Just with this example. If not, let's just do um, one more example. Hopefully, that will be that will strengthen it further, and then we'll jump to Hindi. Okay. So the next one I have is just like the first one I was giving, Sarah. Um, gives. An apple to Mike. Same thing. I want all of you to try out what is the direct object here, and what why what is the indirect object, and why. Okay. So I want all of you to participate. All of you should try your best. What is the direct object in this case, and what is the indirect object? Okay. Okay, keep it coming. Okay, let's hear from you, Scott G. What do you think? What is the direct object and what is the indirect object in this case? Um my internet's really slow today, so I hope you can hear me. Yeah, um, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Apple is the direct object. It receives the action. So Apple is the direct object because it receives the action of? Of gives. Yes. So you know it, answer, it is answering what is Sarah giving, right? Or what does she give? What? Okay. Awesome. And what is the indirect object? Uh, indirect object is Mike. Indirect object is? Indirect object is Mike, and why is Mike the indirect object? Um, he receive he's getting the apple, but he's not receiving the act. He's not uh, receiving the action. That's right. So you have he's Sarah receiving the, the direct object. Yes. So you have a Sarah here. You have Mike here. Okay. And Mike is receiving the apple, so he's receiving the direct object. Right. It becomes an indirect object. Okay. So far, so good. Now we'll jump to the hindi part of it okay and how when you're using the post position ko it can be used with when you have a, a direct object in hindi and as well as the indirect object okay when you have a direct object uh, in hindi that is an animate any a, a living a living thing or a living person as your direct object you use go with with them okay okay so let me let me say it again one more time you have um so right now in this case sarah threw the ball and sarah gives an apple what is the direct object the ball and the apple are they animate or are they inanimate? Sunita ji? Inanimate. In, inanimate. Why are they inanimate? Because? Because they're not, they are not uh, living. That's right. They are not living things. Okay. They are not living things. What if I change this example? What if I change these examples and I rewrite it as? Sarah knows John. Okay, what if, and first of all, um, there's, it's not like a rule that you have to have an indirect object, right? You can just have a subject and verb in a sentence. Okay, you can have subject, verb, and object, direct object. You don't have to have an indirect object, okay? 
Let's consider this very simple example. You have a subject, your verb, and you have a direct object. Sunita ji, what is this direct object? Is it animate or inanimate? Animate. Animate, right? John is a living person, so it is an animate object. Okay. So, so when you have a direct object which is animate in Hindi, you use the your post position ko, and that's your case number one. So, regardless of how you say this in Hindi, John, how will you say John? Sunita ji, you will say John ko. Very good. You will say John ko. Okay. You will say John ko. Okay. And how do you say Sarah knows in Hindi? Saha janchi. Janchi hai. Very good. So you say it as Sarah. To know is Janana. To know is Janana. Right? So with J, with A, N, and Janna. Okay? Because it's present indefinite, you will say Sarah. You remove the Na and you put T. Sarah Janti hai. Now you have to fit it together. Right? Because Hindi is an SOV language. So you have Sarah Janti hai and then John Ko. In English, you put the, uh, you know, the, the object. Uh, later on, but in Hindi you will put it where Sunita ji, you will put Sarah, it up. Ko hai. Very good. So you will say Sarah. Saha Junko. Sarah Junko. Janti. Janti yeah. Hopefully it makes sense to everyone, right? Let me give some more examples and then I'll open it up for questions. And there are too many things in the book, so okay. So now, so you have so far understood that Sarah knows John in Hindi. Sarah John ko janti hai. Instead of that, let's say it was written as Sarah knows Peter. I want to ask complete beginner in this case. Uh, please raise your hand if you're totally beginner like maybe it's your first or second class and uh, prior to that no exposure to hindi or very little okay nobody's raising your hand <laughs> i'm gonna volunteer this so uh so ram kisanji you want to unmute yourself and you want to help us you know this one how do you say sarah knows john can you tell us just with this, how do you say this one? Sarah knows Rita. Um, Namaskar everyone. My name is Su Sushal Ramtitu, Su for short. Um, Sarah knows Rita would be Sarah Rita Ko Janti Hai. Very good, right? Sarah Rita Ko Janti Hai. Right? So all you did, did was basically you understood that there is a direct object, there is a living thing, it has to have a core, okay? Now I want to change it and I want to say I know him. I know him, okay? Very simple, should not come to anyone as a surprise, okay? You can tell what is the subject, what is the word, what is the direct object. Okay, how do you think we will write this one? I want all of you to try it out. Okay, uh, everyone, regardless of your level, um, try it out and tell me how will you say, I know him. Okay, I'm going to give a minute or so to everyone. And folks who are watching on Facebook also, please try. Uh, that's the best way for me to immediately learn. Okay, I know him. Andersji, you want to unmute yourself? I know him. Yeah, I'm a little in doubt here, but I, I the first uh, I would say me unko janta hai. Okay, so but, 
maybe I have to, to maybe change the verb or very good. So you have may hum. If it was simply I know would be may. Janta. Very good, right? It would be may janta hum. I know. Okay, may janta hum. For a guy, for a girl, may janti hum. All you have is now a direct object that is this uh, you know that is basically here in the sentence. What is him? Which is nothing but to plus he. Okay, that would be me. Unko or usko? You tell me. Unko? So, what first one is vehe? Vehe ko. Plus ko and ko. then ve plus ko. So, this is ve is they, vehe is he or she. So, usko? Yeah, there you go. Right, so me usko janta hu. If Anders is saying it, and if Sheila ji is saying it, it would be me usko. Janti. That's right. Me usko janti hu. Okay. I hope this is making sense, right? Um. Okay. So now, so far, we have tried to change. Now let's say instead of this, I change the sentence further to uh, I change the verb. Okay, uh, there are multiple ways of saying it, but I'm going to try this one in, in a simpler way where you can use the the co with the direct object. So now you have I like I like them. Okay, I like them. Okay, all of you should try it out. It's simple. I'm just slowly changing the. Uh, the, the the level we started with very simple now you have i like them okay, i want all of it right out okay see okay so try it out Remember, there are multiple ways you learn things. So right now we are not putting it on. Uh, we are not putting co on I. Okay, we are learning the way where we are putting co to the direct object. That's the clue I'll give you. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Donanji, how are you doing? You too, you can. <laughs> okay. You want to try this out, Donanji? Uh, okay, me, mm -hmm. unko, pasan kartihu. So if it is I like, would be me, pasan, pasan kartihu. Very good, me pasan kartihu. That's the simplest way of saying it, right? me pasan kartihu. Now, how do you do this? Me to them is? Un, oh, well, it's they. Yeah. We have to put it with unko. Yes. So, me unko pasan karti hu. Okay. I like that. Okay. Um, some of you, you know, it, you try different ways. That's completely correct. Okay. But, and there are multiple ways of saying it in Hindi. You know, simply when you say, I like apple, you can also say, like, muchko apple pasan hai. Right. But right now I want to stick with like this method, which is my unko person Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Maybe I do a small a word cloud exercise. So that way all of you get into the habit of like so far it still feels like you know what it makes sense because it's written, so it's easier to just put go to the direct object but how does it come just naturally in in the memory right so that way you don't have to think it hard okay right that can be a very uh, common concern so what i'm going to do i'm going to write subject okay and i'm going to write word and uh, direct object 
and I want you to all think about different possibilities. If not, at least in your mental model as you are making sentences, try out. Try out different combinations. So you have Sam, okay? Sam is the guy here in this case. You you have here, okay? You have no. You have save, understand, and there is R, understand. You have pull. Pull in Hindi is. Kichna. Kichna. Very good. Kichna. Say it one more time, Vidya ji. Um, Kichna. Very good. Kichna. Okay. Teach. Okay. Rest of the verb, I think you should know. Um, if not, at least. Oh, let's try it out. Let's say from you only, Vidya ji. To hear is. Uh, so, some say sunna, some say sunana. Very good. To know is you already know jana. Jana. To save is bachana. Bachana. And to understand is samajna. 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 And to teach is padhana. Padhana. Very good. Okay, so you have work. Now I'm going to put some direct object there. Okay, and simple, I'm going to just put Sarah here. I'm going to put him or her. Or I'm going to put them. All of them, I deliberately put it as an animate direct object. Okay, hopefully it should, if you try it genuinely with me here, it will fit in your memory and then it Immediately you start using co when you're using in a sentence, whether it is Sam knows him or her or whether Sam understands Sarah or whether Sam teaches uh, them or whether Sam saves uh, him. Okay, it will immediately start making sense that you know that you have to put co with the direct object. Okay. So I want all of you to think about at least a few sentences in your mental model. Definitely try to make as many sentences as possible because you know the subject, right? You can simply say, um, Sam ne Sarah ko suna. Sam heard Sarah, right? Sam Sarah ko samajta hai. Sam understands Sarah, okay? Or let's say if it is Bob here, let's say, and if the sentence was like Sam saved Bob, Sam ne Bob ko bachaya, right? Some of it may be hard for beginner because you know so far at least if you were to just follow Richard Delisi books, we've not done the name, right? Similarly, we've not done the past tense. So be it. You can use it in the present tense. That is simple enough, right? I won't speak much, and I'm gonna ask some of you to. Raise your hand and at least start with that. Let's start with that. Some of you to volunteer yourself and tell me what comes to your mind. A simple sentence. So far, we're still on case number one. Okay. So let's see who would like to volunteer. You can change it also if you think you have a better one. Be my guest. You can change the subject, you can change the object. Who would like to go first? Okay, I have someone raising their hand. Okay, go for it, Sheila Ji. Okay, Sam Unko Pata Hai. What did you mean, Sam? Uh, Sam um, teaches them. Okay, Sam Unko Patna, patna Hai. Okay, so Sam teaches them present indefinite. Sam unko padhata hai. Padhata hai. There you go. Sam unko padhata hai. There you go. Awesome. Sam teaches them. Right? Who would like to go next? 
so if you can if you find the other tenses hard just stick with present indefinite because all you have to do is remove the word the na and put ta ta te or t at the end of the verb okay maybe that will help okay go for it akhil sam ne sara ko suna sam ne sara ko suna what does it mean um sam heard sara i mean sam. very good sam. very good right sam heard sara awesome who would like to go next okay I go can... for yep try sara ne use achhi tarah se suna okay sara ne अच्छे से सुना ओके सारा ने किसको अच्छे से सुना वॉट इज द डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट हियर नंदिनी जी सारा ने राधिका ओके सारा ने राधिका को सुना राधिका इज़ द डायरेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट राइट ऑसम सारा ने सारा ने राधिका को सुना अच्छे से सुना ओके लाइक टू गो ने प्लीज प्लीज सैम शिक्षक को समझता है ओके सैम टीचर को और शिक्षक को समझता है सैम अंडरस्टैंड्स द टीचर ओह द टीचर सॉरी या ऑल गुड या नंदनी जी गो फॉर इट योर टर्न सैम बॉब को बचाएगा ओके सैम बॉब को व्हाट इज़ द वर्ड हियर टू टेल टू टेल इस Oh, to tell. Sorry, maybe I didn't. But I was thinking of bachana, save, will save. Oh, I, oh, I see, I see. Okay, I, that's what I heard. So you're right. Sam Bob ko bachayega. Bachayega. Very good. And so she oh, said. Oh, bachayega. Wow, we're even saving Bob. <laughs> Sam will save Bob, right? So it's written. She said it in a future indefinite. That's why remove the na and then ega bacha ega. right but she did use ko after that so sam bob ko bachayega okay um in the same sentence if it is written in the past tense nandini ji it would be if it was sam saved bob sam ne bob ko bachaya okay now i bacha yeah right sam ne bob ko bachaya because you are advanced i'm going to make it even harder sam saved hmm. Bob from drowning. Sam, Sam, ne, ma, uh, drowning is do do. What is that? Do na, do na. Yeah. The yeah. uh, Sam ne Bob ko doop se. I don't know from drowning. Doop se bacha, bacha ta hai or bacha ya. Okay. Sam ne something bacha ya, but I don't know. Bob no, ko. Right. Sam ne uh, Bob ko. Do, Do I don't know the word that properly for the drowning? Drowning say bachaya. Huh? <laughs> no, bachaya is correct. It's just the dubna, right? So the verb is dubna. From drowning would be dubne. Dubne say. Dubne say. Dubne say. Very good, right? Sam ne bob. Oh, the say makes it dubne say. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I should have known awesome. that. Awesome. But it was a hard sentence, right? Sam ne bob ko dubne say bachaya. Okay, awesome. Who would like to go next? Tisi Naji, you want to try this out? These are simple things. It should hopefully okay. Tisi Naji, you can unmute yourself. If not, that's okay. You can write it also. We have someone new, Sushil. You want to try this out, Sushil? Um. Let's go with Sam will teach him. Mm -hmm. Um, Sam use sika sika yega. Sam use pada yega. Very good, Sam. What does it mean? Sam will teach him. Okay, Sam usko she said or use both of them are correct. Sam will teach her or him. Sam usko. पढ़ाएगा राइट सैम उसको पढ़ाएगा अमेजिंग राइट दैट्स करेक्ट सैम उसको पढ़ाएगा ओके आई टेक फ्यू मोर एंड देन 
for those who couldn't get a chance i definitely want you to take a picture of it and and practice keith let's go for hear from you keith okay uh if you can hear us keith you can unmute if you need more time that's totally okay mala ji how are you doing long time okay let's see sharan ji you want to try this out uh sure yeah. sam bob ko mm -hmm. nahi samajhta hu it's na samajhta hai very good sam what does it mean sam doesn't understand bob yeah very good sam doesn't understand bob sam bob ko nahi samajhta hai okay anybody else getting inspired and like overcome like that feeling that you know it's there in my mind but it's not coming to my tongue like this is your chance and ek intermediate one ha bolo na intermediate acha to sara kheech kar sam ko ek thappad mara sara ne sara ne sara ne kisko sara ne sam ko kheech kar सैम को एक थप्पड़ मारा तो थप्पड़ इज नथिंग बट अ स्लैप ओके एंड एंड व्हाट शी सेइंग द वर्ड शी इज यूजिंग इज टू स्लैप राइट सो टू स्लैप इज थप रीड इट एज वन वर्ड थप्पड़ मारना राइट सो समबडी इज रिसीविंग द सी दिस इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जांपल नॉट इन अ वे ऑफ डूइंग इट बट लाइक यू नो समबडी इज रिसीविंग द द द स्लैप राइट and who is receiving that the direct object so if mm -hmm. sam is receiving it like he is the direct object so sara ne sam ko thappad mara basically right okay i have okay sushil uh you um, how do you say it yeah go how do you say your name sushil or sushil sushil okay go for it sushil. um can you tell me how to write pull in devnagari script and to slap looks like it might be an interesting one to learn <laughs> Which one, Ko? Um, pull and to slap. Okay. Your voice is breaking. So, Ko and to pull the verb to pull. This one. No pull. Teach na to pull and to slap. To pull and to slap. Oh, I see. I see. To pull and to slap. Yes. So to pull is. What do you think is ka? Okay, what do you think is the e, the small or the bada e? Any folks who write there now? Bada, the long e. Huh? Long e. Bari, bari, bari. Ka. Okay, with e. Oh, sorry, ka ka. Ch and na, kich na. There will be dot here. Where will be the dot? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. Yes, yes, a dot. Kichna, kichna. Kichna, kichna. Yeah. Kich, cha, cha, cha. In between, in between the key and the cha, the dot. Yes. Yes. Kichna, kichna. To pull. And the next one is what you said was. Tappar mara. Tappar. So that's what do you think is it? It will be tha, after, pa, and uh, tappar. Tappar mara. Okay, top one. Okay, now go for your sentence. Um, Was it a question, or you wanted to share a sentence also, Sue? So? Um, I did share a sentence already, but I could do. Oh, you want to share? Read it then. Um. So, usko janti hai. ओके तुम उसको जानते हो इफ यू यूजिंग तुम इट तुम उसको जानते हो ओके ऑसम ऑसम ग्रेट सो दिस वाज आवर केस नंबर ओके राधिका जी और इज रेजिंग योर हैंड और जस्ट टू मेक अनदर सेंटेंस या गो फॉर इट गो या साम ने बॉब को गलत फहमी से बचाया ओके वेरी गुड साम ने बॉब को गलत गलत करने से बचाया राइट गलत फहमी गलत फहमी 
for a misunderstanding. Promoting Galat Pakmi Galat Pakane or Pakne Pakmi. Yeah, maybe it comes from Pakane because I heard from the Bo Bollywood serials. <laughs> so, so and the sentence, what does it mean? Uh, Bo Sam saved Bob from misunderstanding. Oh, from misunderstanding. Galat Femi se bacha hai. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Sam named Bob ko Galat Femi. Fahmi, yeah, Fahmi. Uh, maybe I'm pronouncing wrongly. Galat Femi. Oh, Fahmi, yeah. Not a P sound. Fahmi. Awesome. Yeah, Fahmi. Misunderstanding. Awesome. So this was your case number one, where you have a direct object that is an animate object, okay, animate thing. Case number two is what if you have a direct object that's basically not a, an animate thing and it's an inanimate thing. Animate thing. Okay, so I'll write two sentences and then I'll make my uh, so consider two examples. Okay, let's say you have a sentence called Sarah reads. Sarah reads. So far, you don't know. You have a subject here, you have a word here. You don't know what Sarah reads. So, regardless, there is no direct object. Now you have Sarah reads a newspaper. Okay, that's your direct object. Okay, is it an animate? No, it's not an animate object. It's an inanimate object inanimate okay typically um, typically for the most part like when you're saying general things in the inanimate stuff you just say if it is Sarah read it would be Sarah to read is Padna so that would be JDG it would be Sarah uh, RT whom Parti hai. Sara parti hai. Sara kya parti hai? Uh, akbar. Very good, right? So Sara akbar parti hai. Or Sara newspaper parti hai. If you don't know the word for newspaper, you can just say newspaper. Sara newspaper parti hai. Right? So far so good. But what if the sentence is written as Sara reads this newspaper, a specific one. Sarah. Yes. So in the case number two, when you have inanimate object, which is a specific one, rather than Sarah reads a newspaper, Sarah reads the newspaper. Okay. Then you use ko with that. So Sarah Akbar ko parti hai. Okay. Or if she's reading a particular book, that there is an understanding, mutual understanding for that, then you can say Sarah kitab ko parti hai. Okay. Um, so when you see ko being used with an inanimate object, you should understand that they're talking about a specific book or a specific um, uh, direct object. Okay. Specific one. Okay. Um, I want to hear some more examples from you guys. Uh, before I write it. So I want you to voluntarily just raise your hand and share something which explains case number two. Volunteers? Aneskaji, you want to try this one out? Um, <laughs> a larky, uh, <clears throat> uh, Hudson River, uh, co, uh, ter tat he. Okay, okay. Um, terna is a, it's a slightly different word, but let's say you want to say, um, let's say to watch. Ah, okay. 
So, uh, yeah. La Larka, um, Larka, uh, Hudson River, Co, uh, Dekta hai. Very good, right? Larka, Hudson River, Co, Dekta hai. A specific river, right? River, Co, Dekta hai. Okay. Anyone else would like to try? Okay, go for it, uh, Meeta ji. Um, Bob Bharat ko jata hai. Bob Bharat ko jata hai. Okay, okay. Um, good one. It's a, what you're doing is a case number four, a destination, a particular place. So we'll cover that. Okay. Um, we'll cover that one as well. But like, yes, whenever there's a destination, you know, it, you use the ko as well. Okay, go for it, Akhil. Um, is parathe ko mat khao. Is parathe ko mat khao. Okay, uh, very good. Like, don't eat this paratha, this specific one. Okay, this parathe ko mat khao. Okay, awesome. Next one. Who would like to try that? Uh, can I try one? Ashish? Yes. Yes, please. Um. Us, um, us kursi par baito. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Us, us kursi ko baito. Set in that chair. Um, so then it's the kursi pe baito, right? Um, if you want to say don't use, uh, that specific chair mm -hmm. then you because like then you you will be oh like, okay you know, so if you're saying it in a negative way don't sit in the chair but if you're no, sitting use use don't use so if you were to say don't use that us kursi ko kursi ko versus kursi pe like when you're sitting kursi pe betho oh but right kursi ko let's say don't use it use Istamal mat karo or use. So more. use. Oh, okay. So you use yeah. the word use. Yeah. So you want to say use that. Let's say I want to simplify your sentence. What you're saying, you want to say use that chair. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, usi kursi um, ko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you say use again? I forgot. <laughs> you can say use, use, use mat kar. Um, you can say that or you can yeah. or, yeah, or use karo. That's right. You can say use karo or if you want to say istamal karo. Istamal, yes. Istamal karo. Either way is fine. Use karo. Okay. Anybody else? See, it's harder than I, you know, it, which is, which is like, you know, which makes sense because if nothing is in front of you, you know, you are just trying to make it up. So I totally understand why it can be a little bit challenging. But anyone else? Ashi ji. Yeah. Will it work like a Sam ek kel kelta hai, but a Sam cricket ko kelta hai? Is that okay. correct or a slightly in this case? Which one? Sam, one sa, no, two sentences. Sam ek kel kelta hai. Sam. Or say Sam Kel Kelta hai. Game. Okay, Kelta hai. Okay. Sam okay. cricket ko Kelta hai. Sam cricket ko Kelta hai. Kel, game ko Kelta hai. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but in the specific is cricket. So in this case, is it a. Do you put a comma there or a not necessary? It's, it's, even if you don't put it, it's implied. You know, Sam yeah. plays. Right, so it's it's either way is correct. Both of them are correct. Sam cricket ko khelta hai. So that's or, a goal score. Yes. Okay. Simply. Yeah. Anita and Keith. After that, yes, Professor Anita. Is kitab bahut bahut dil chasp hai. Um, ap is kitab ko par hi hai. Okay, very good. Yeh kitab bahut dil chasp hai. Ap is kitab ko par hi hai. Right. So she used an imperative to tell someone, read this book. Okay, amazing. Okay, go for it, Keith. Okay, so I was going to go with 
Sarah Seb Kul Kati Hai. Sarah Kisko Parti Hai. Seb Kul. Spell it. Um, apple Seb. Oh, apple Ko. Okay, very good. Sarah Apple Ko Kati Hai. Is that what you're trying to say? Kati Hai. Okay. Ka. Then it's a specific apple. Okay. Okay, awesome. And I think someone else was raising their hand. Vidyaji, who are you? I have, uh, I like Professor Snell's sentence, Chotu ko mat maro. Chotu ko mat maro. Okay, <laughs> Chotu ko. <laughs> chotu ko mat maro. But Chotu is a, it's a, a living person, but it's a good example regardless. Chotu ko mat maro. You, you are in a beating mood. <laughs> <laughs> Today. Awesome. All right, so I'll do case three now. So this was your case two. Case one, remember, when you have a direct object in Hindi, that is animate. Okay. Second one, when you have a direct object, that is inanimate, but you want that to be a specific one. Right. So remember that. Okay. Now you have a case three, which is basically using co with an indirect object. I'm going to go a little bit faster so I can wrap it up. Um, so now you have case three using go with an indirect object. Okay. Hopefully you still remember the the distinction, right? With it for direct and indirect object. Okay. So now you have let's say you have a sentence called Sarah sells. Sweater. Okay, to sell is bechna. And sweater, what does she sell? A sweater. So that's your direct object. Sarah sells a sweater, but who is the recipient of the sweater? You don't know yet. You don't know the indirect object. So let's say it is Sarah sells a sweater to Meli. So Meli is the recipient of the sweater or the direct object so meli is your indirect object so when you have a sentence like that uh, you use ko with the indirect object okay so regardless of how you say this sentence in hindi what will you say here scott how will you say to meli meliko Meliko, very good. Meliko. And how will you say this sentence? Sarah sells sweater. <laughs> uh, uh, see. It's simple, right? Sarah. There'll be one more word. <laughs> sweater. Okay, Sarah sweater. Uh -huh. Very good. What is the word? Um, I don't know the word for sweater. Oh, sells. Um, bechna. So, as it written present indefinite, you remove the na. Uh, bechta. Because it's a girl, it's will be. Bechti. Very good. And you finish it with. Um, uh, Meliko. Sarah. Sweater. Bechti. Um, it's like my khata hu, my pita hu. Sarah. Bechti. Okay. Very good. Now all you have to do is put the indirect object. How will you put it? Um, Melike after Sarah. So after Sarah, you put Sarah Meli. Meli uh, Ko. Very good. Say it. Read it out now. The full sentence. Sarah Meli Ko sweater bechti hai. There you go. Sarah Meli Ko sweater bechti hai. That's you are using ko with the indirect object. Okay. If it was instead of meli, it was Rohan, it would be simple, right? How will you say Scott again? Um, Sarah, Rohan, ko, sweater. Um, HTA. Very good. HTA. Right now, instead of this, instead of cells, teach Sarah 
teaches Hindi. Farah teaches Hindi to Rohan. I want all of you to think about it and write it down. Okay? It's simple, right? You have the template in front of you. Right? Sarah teaches Hindi to Rohan. And if you don't know how to say teach in Hindi, you know the formula also in Hindi, how to ask it. Someone who has not tried it. Okay. Barbara, you want to try it out? Uh, yes, Sara. Uh -huh. uh, uh, in the in the Bashako, uh -huh. in the Bashako, uh, party has. Okay. So just fill it out, Sara. And then instead of Meli, it would be. Allora, uh, Sara uh, Rohan Ko. Sara Rohan Ko. Ko eh, Indi Basha. Uh -huh. Party. Hindi. Party hai. So, to, what is to teach? To teach uh, uh, Parna. That's to read. To, to teach read Parna. Uh, parha. Para. Para. Parana. Okay. Party hai. So, Padna is to read, Padana is to teach. Now, si. use Padana. So, Sarah Rohan ko Hindi. Hindi. Parti hai. Pa Parti hai. No? Okay, almost. Instead of Parti hai, it would be? Uh... Pa parta, parta hai. So, padna, so I think, I, I, so one is padna, padna is to read. To read. And there is a A before that, it would be padhana. 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 So, you remove the na and you put T, it would be? Parhati, parhati hai. Hmm. Okay. Do you understand the difference now? It's padha, padhati hai. Parhati hai. Right. Okay. Sarah, Sarah Rohan ko Hindi parhati hai. Sarah Rohan ko Hindi parhati hai. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah? Yeah? Awesome. Let's try this one. Sarah. So now you have Sarah gives. I want all of you to try it out. Sarah gives. Money to Rohan. Allora, Sara uh, Rohan Co. Um, pese. Mm -hmm. Pese. Uh, de, 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 uh, to give uh, Digia. To, no? Dena. Uh, that he had. Very good. To give is Dena. Dena. That he had. Sara Rohan Co. Pese. Oh, pese. That he had. There you go. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. Yeah. So I know we are right on time and um, I want to do case four. So if you can stick with me, at least that way, at least this uh, co will be done. Okay. I, I promise it won't take too much. Okay. So this one is slightly different. This has nothing to do with the direct or the indirect object. Uh, it's altogether a different section when you are using post positions with destination. So this is a post position with, with destination. Destination if you are going to a place, right? Um, which is basically, um, um, let's say you have a sentence called, um, go to her office, go to her office. Okay, um, or I go to her office. Okay, so it's basically there is a destination which you are going towards. Regardless of how you say the sentence, 
in hindi the this destination will include co office co okay um so you can either say main office jaunga versus main which is typically they say main office jaunga i will go to office but there is an implied co here main office ko jaunga you don't see ko here but there is you know you, you know it's there, there is ko basically it's always been dropped in the sentence okay um i want to give a simple sentence here that that so that it makes sense um so let's say i want to use the same example that you know richard delisi uses okay so which is basically vah he came to our house he came to our house okay so let's break it down to our house okay so how do you say our house in hindi just our house amara amara ghar amara ghar right hamara ghar simple how do you say he came va aaya va aaya very good right uh intransitive word va aaya okay let's put it together va aaya you can say va and then va aaya hamare right so first one is you put hamara ghar Right. Something is missing there, though. If you were to just simply say the ghost, right? it is not. the ghost. Right, exactly. Right, so that's the ghost co. It's a destination. If you were to just simply say, "Vah, hamara ghar aaya," grammatically incorrect. Right. So there is a co here, and because of this co, it becomes hamare. Hamare. Yes. So you say, "Vah, hamare." ghar you can remove it you don't have to put it va hamare ghar aaya okay va hamare ghar aaya so it's the co here is implied you don't put it or you can even if you put it that's totally okay va hamare ghar ko aaya okay so that's your co Shri, i have a question yes sorry it's already late but is you know my question is if i i'm just go i go to office it could be any office it's not any particular office so i can just say mai office um jaati hu but here vah hamare ghar it's a particular house it's our okay. house is that exactly. why the co is there and the other way there is no need for a co there you know that's my question here it's about a particular house not a particular so, office it's just in it's ours that is correct if it there, was there it could be any any house If it was any house, वह घर वह घर जाती है, वह घर जाती है, because he goes home. We don't know whose house it is. That's But वह right. हमारे घर, my our particular house he's coming to. Is that why it's हमारे? That is correct. Right. If it was even if you were to say it in English, if it was no हमारे, if it was simply वह घर आया, he came to the house, huh. right? Versus... But it's a particular house, so there's a co. That's right. It's a particular. Is that the way it is? It's a particular destination. Yeah, yeah. It's right? you know, it's someone's. You know, we know it's our house, not anyone's right. house. It's just yeah. Specific. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. That's why it is Hamare. Thank you. Thank you. Any last minute question? I know we are slightly over over time, but any any other questions? I'm going to stop the broadcast. So for folks who are watching. on facebook thank you so much um you know i'll look at all your comments and uh, i'll respond to them